Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Welcome to my channel, PC Monkey, where I try to bring you a wide variety of do it yourself computer upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 onto your HP computer. In order to do that, I have an install media USB that I created for myself for free off of Microsoft's website. If you want to see how you can create that for free, I'll have a video link here where I show you how to create that for free on Microsoft's website. In order to do that, you're going to need another working computer and a USB. If you don't have those for whatever reason and you can't create your own, you'll have to purchase it. If you need to purchase it, make sure you get install media and not recovery media. Some sellers on sites like eBay will label their recovery media as install media, but you cannot use it to install Windows if it's recovery media. I'll show you some suggestions here on my Amazon store link. That's where I give you all of my tool suggestions and my equipment suggestions, and that shows you some stuff that you can buy and it's install media that you can use for this process. Before we get going guys, please remember to like and share if this video was helpful. If you enjoy do-it-yourself computer tutorials like this, please remember to subscribe. Last thing, a quick shout out to my sponsor, NiceHash. NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you is you can now rent out your computer's unused power online to people who mine cryptocurrency and they pay you for that in Bitcoin. It's a great way to earn some side money with no work. It's a great way to start investigating the world of crypto without risking an investment. You can check them out here or I'll fill you in more at the end of the video. You can check them out here or I'll fill you in more about them at the end of the video. So now let's get into the project. I'm going to take my computer. I'm going to make sure it's powered off. I'm going to grab my Windows 11 install media and I'm going to plug it in. So we'll take our USB. We'll plug it into the USB port on the computer. Then we'll hit the power button. Start tapping on F9. With most HP computers, you're going to be hitting F9 like I did right after hitting power. Tap on it repeatedly. With some models, it may be a different key. With some HPs, it may even be the enter key. So if F9 doesn't work for you, try the other ones. Try enter. Look it up in your owner's manual. Google it. Or if you can't find the right key, leave me a comment and I can help you out. So after getting into your boot menu, you're going to scroll down to your USB option. You can either use your arrows, your mouse. Uh, your tab key sometimes. If you don't have the use of those things in BIOS, you may want to plug in a USB mouse and use that. Or if you have a touch screen like me, the touch screen should still work in this menu. So for me, my USB option is number two. I'm going to arrow down and I'm going to hit enter. That accesses my USB install media. So here's the first set of options that we're going to choose from during the install process. As a reminder guys, before this process starts, make sure your computer's plugged in. Uh, you don't want to lose battery power and have your computer shut off during the install process. It could mess up your progress and you may have to start it all over again. So make sure your computer's plugged in throughout this process. Another reminder, the options that I'm choosing may not be the best options for you. I'll try to call those out as we hit them, but depending on where you live or what you're using your computer for, your options may differ. So for me right now, English in the United States, these options are good for me. I'm going to hit next. And then in your next window, install now. Again, you can use your enter keys, your arrow keys. Hopefully you have the use of your mouse. If you don't, try a USB mouse, that should help. Um, or again, if you have a touch screen like I do, then you can click on the options using your touch screen. I'm just going to accept the terms and conditions. Hit next. Now we have two options, upgrade option, install windows and keep files, or the custom install windows only advanced. Most of the computers I work on here, they're going to be refurb computers. So I don't mind wiping everything, starting fresh, erasing all the data, and then reselling the computer. So for me, I'm going to choose a second option, the custom install option. If you're just doing an upgrade to repair some sort of operating system damage, or for whatever reason you don't want to wipe everything and you want to keep your files, you would choose the first option. Keep in mind, if you want to save your files, the best way to do that is to back them up before this install process. But if you, again, if you want to save your files, you would choose that first option. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that second option. And again, because I want to delete everything, I'm going to go through and delete each partition 
until they're all gone. If you wanted to save your files, you would not delete these partitions. So to delete them, I'm clicking on the first partition. I'm hitting the delete key and hitting OK. I'll click on the next partition, delete, OK. So now after deleting all the partitions, I'm left with unallocated space, which should roughly resemble the size of your hard drive or your solid state drive. After I've done that and I've selected it as where I want to install Windows, I'm going to hit next. And now it starts the install process. Your computer may have to restart several times, that's normal. So now here are some more options you want to choose to finish the install process. At this point guys, what you want to do is unplug your USB from your computer. If your computer needs to restart from this point on, what could happen if you don't unplug your USB is it could see this during the restart and think that it needs to start the process all over again. This process for me took about 30 minutes. It may take longer for you depending on your computer. So you definitely don't want to start all over again if you've made it to this point. So unplug your USB right now. Now again, keep in mind that your options may not be the same as my options. Just make sure you're choosing the right ones for you. Is this the right keyboard layout? I'm going to hit yes. Do I want to add a second keyboard layout? I do not, so I'm going to hit skip. You can do whatever you want. Now it's asking to connect to a Wi-Fi network. At this point, there's two ways you can go. You can either connect to a Wi-Fi network right now, and that will aid in the finishing of your setup process. However, what will happen is shortly after this, it'll prompt you to either log into your Microsoft account or create one if you don't have one. And for most computers, there won't be a way around it if you don't want to do it. You'll be stuck at that point until you either log into your Microsoft account or create a Microsoft account. If you don't want to either sign into your Microsoft account or you don't want to create a Microsoft account, you'll see an option for continue without internet or continue with limited setup or an option that says I don't have internet, you would select that option. For me, in this case, I'm going to sign in and proceed with the install. Now that I'm connected to my Wi-Fi, I'll hit next. Name my device, I'm just going to put HP. Hit next. Asks you how you want to set it up, personal or work. I'm just going to hit personal for right now and hit next. And then here's the part where you have to sign into your Microsoft account. After signing in, it'll ask you to sync. I'm going to hit next. Create a PIN number. I'm going to hit that. After you've entered a PIN number, you hit OK. This is where you would choose privacy settings. I don't like giving out any data that I'm not paid for, so I'm going to unselect all of these. I'm just a little weird that way. You guys can do whatever you want. After making your selections, click Accept. This can customize your experience, spend some time, go through this if you want. I'm just going to hit skip now because I'm just doing this for the video. I'm going to skip this as well. And I'm going to decline this as well. And here we are on the Windows 11 desktop. That's a successful install. Now keep in mind, after this install is complete, it's a brand new install of this operating system. There's a lot of security updates, system updates, driver updates. There's a lot of updates that have to process for your computer to run smooth and fast. If you don't process those updates now all at once, what could happen is they'll start processing themselves in the background for days after this process, which could slow your computer down considerably. So what I'm going to show you how to do now is get in there, run all these updates manually so you get that out of the way, and you can enjoy your smooth, fast computer after. So what you want to do is go up top to your search bar and type in updates. Right here you'll see Windows Update Settings and System Settings. That's what we want. We'll click on that. This dialog box will appear. Now you either could see a bunch of updates populate and start processing automatically, or you could see this, no updates are available. Never believe that when it says it, always click on this button, check for updates. 
As you can see, a lot of updates have populated. We're going to click on Install All. After you select that option and you get your updates installing, you'll see them changing over time. You'll see different updates finishing, other updates taking their place. You may even be prompted to restart the computer several times. If you're prompted to do that, take advantage of it, restart the computer, and then when you get back to your desktop, do this again. Go into your search bar, type in updates, manually check for updates, keep that going over and over. You may have to restart several times to get all the updates through before you restart your computer, check updates, and it says they've all been processed. So it may take a little while, but this will ensure your computer works smooth and fast from here on out. So that's the video guys. Again, please like and share if this helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, check the FAQs below in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you don't see your question there, feel free to leave me a comment. I do try to address those a couple times a day at least. And now as promised before, a few extra words on my sponsor NiceHash. So as mentioned before, NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you is you can now rent out your computer's unused and idle power online to crypto miners and you get paid for that power in Bitcoin. It is a great way to rent out your computer, make some money on the side without any work. And you can also start investigating the world of crypto without really risking any investment. You already own the computer. Most of us have computers far more powerful than we need day to day. And this is a great way to put that to work. You can use their research tools to research other cryptocurrencies, their exchange feature to trade for other cryptocurrencies. You can store your money on their wallets and you can even try your own hand at mining by using their quick miner. So there's a lot of different resources there. You can check them out here. Leave me any questions or comments you have about them. I can try to help you out. Thank you so much for watching guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.